welcome to my eclectic channel. My name is Agnes and I make videos for fun. This video may not be as fun, but I wanted to talk about the cognitive dissonance that we've been exposed to, at least where I live in the United States. And then you have to add to that what we've all been living, where on a regular basis we have to expect to be bedridden for a week or worse. I'm going to be shooting this video from my own personal experience because that's all I have. Adding to the, the cognitive dissonance is that it just feels so natural for everybody to just catch COVID, they get sick, they move on. I've done the same. I caught it back in February. I got sick, I recovered eventually. I move on with my life, but it's affected me. It's, it's not something that I want to do again. It derailed my work and <laughs> I'm not the only one I know, I know that. Uh, maybe I'm from a place of uh, privilege where I don't get sick much. So for me, it was kind of new to be out of commission for, for two weeks. Uh, and then I'll talk some more through the video, but I got sick repeatedly after that. And then, uh, this is a little different from catching a cold. I have, I have a husband and he's not any younger than I am. And if I bring this home, I fear that he's going to get at, at least as sick as I was, maybe more. And that's something else that worries me. And I think that's something that we all live with. The mystery to me, comes in in the how carefree people seem. <laughs> as, I, as I showed in my intro, we are now peaking where, where I live and we're not even peaking. I think it's tough to tell, but we're definitely way up there where we are where we were back in February when I caught it and a lot of people knew we're catching it. We're in the same situation now. I know a lot of people are catching it, entire families. And even my, my institution has saying, the, always what we hear, keep up on your vaccines, okay, definitely. But also, they said to mask. And I, I think that's a simple measure, so I've been doing that. But we're not, like the rest of, the rest of us is not. And that's the part that uh, I really don't understand. Uh, I'm traveling right now, and um, it's not the first time this has happened, but I, have, I was put in a situation where you read the room, <laughs> you read the situation, you keep yourself safe as much as you can. But let's just say that I had a, a, a quick and stressful lunch. So in this video, uh, I wanted to, to talk about this, uh, this, this stress that I, 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 can't, I can't imagine I'm the only one <laughs> going through that. It's been going on for, for several years now. Uh, so everyone talks about the stress that people went when they were on lockdowns. But um, for me, the, the, the mental stress is now and it's been continuing and con continuing and continuing. But if you're like me, I wanted to share in this video uh, how individually I was able to keep myself uh, as safe as I could and also how I cope with, uh, with certain situations. I would love to hear what you're thinking in the comments. So the first thing I wanted to share was how I keep informed. You can't rely on the news anymore. Uh, like right now we're, we're peaking and it's nowhere. Like actually maybe one reason that no one is masking is that they don't know. They just, they just don't know. Maybe they, they know a few people who are getting sick, but they don't have a true measure of what COVID is doing right now. So I keep an eye on it. I am an astrophysicist. I live and breathe data. I don't find data intimidating or boring. I find data comforting. So that's where I go. So throughout the pandemic, I have found ways to monitor the situation. And something that we started doing in, in the United States fairly early on, which is fantastic, I got that I like, uh, we started monitoring sewer data. That's kind of gross. <laughs> this is a very good measure, even today, when, when we're not monitoring really anything else anymore. We're still monitoring the water. And that used to be a little difficult to track. You had to go through some private websites. 
The CDC started tracking it some months ago, but even as an astrophysicist, I could not tell what was what. It was terribly difficult, but now they've improved a lot. So I do go to the CDC website and it is super easy to, to at a glance, you see what's going on. I look at two charts weekly. Uh, the first one is this really pretty colorful chart and it is showing the different versions of the virus that are going around. And I've been following this for months and months, uh, probably over a year by now. I have noticed patterns. I can tell when a current wave is going to wane and I can tell that we're heading for another wave. It's been alternating between having a single dominant variant to having a bunch of variants going on at once. So whenever you have a new variant that comes on, obviously people who caught the previous variants are not as immune. At that point, you can expect a lot of people to get sick. But then if we stay with that one variant, it becomes dominant and it stays there for a few weeks. Eventually, everybody catches it and we build herd immunity. With COVID, it's terrible. It's a, it's a coronavirus. We have to build herd immunity over and over again because it mutates so fast. But yeah, so you reach herd immunity at that point, we have a lull. And then typically what happens after a variant has been dominant, it makes babies. And then you got a bunch of different variants going on and then people get sick again. And then the second chart I look at is the amount of virus present in the water. And here you can uh, select your, your state. Uh, they don't have it by counties. That's a shame. I used to have that data, but that went behind a paywall. If you can get your own county, it's nice because you, you can plan better. Uh, if it's statewide, it's going to be slower. Like it, it, it might show that it's still rising statewide, but maybe your county already went through it and you're safe, but you don't know that. So you kind of have to play it safe and, and wait until the entire state gets through it. So I've observed, I've been observing that uh, from the beginning of the pandemic, actually. And uh, what I've noticed there is that there, there are seasonal variations. And if, if you're thinking, ah, COVID is like the flu, it goes away in the summer and it comes back in the winter, that's kind of true, but not entirely, because it's dependent on those uh, variants. I think we had a big wave every December and January. <laughs> You'd have to go, you can go back and check. But that has been a, a constant. So if you're thinking December, January, I can expect to be, you know, to get sick or I, I will know people are getting sick. That's probably a good bet. But it doesn't mean we're out of the woods elsewhere. Summers are typically calmer, but the calm period varies. In 2002, we had a lull in April. So that's before summer. And then it just took off in July because of this variant, new variant coming on. So there's a big wave in July and that's middle of summer. And uh, in 2024, this year, we had a calm summer, but uh, we had, we started, started taking off in August and it was going, it's been going up and up and up and up. And I'm filming this in, in mid September and it's just, going up. I don't know when this wave is going to end and I don't know how it's going to merge with the December January wave. Are we going to have a December January wave this year? I don't know because it's COVID is semi seasonal. That's why I always monitor that data. Are you still here? Congratulations. What I just showed you was probably uh, complicated and, and maybe exhausting. And that's where I think we have a problem. I love data, I, but what I just went through, you know, I, I like this stuff, but I understand we don't all do and we're busy. So wouldn't be great if we had a simple scale. I really, I really wish we, we, we had guidance. And I know COVID fatigue, we got over it, yada, yada, but some of us care. Some of us would like to know. And I think if we had a simple scale that we could go by, maybe some people, more people would look at it and, and act accordingly, because why not? How many of us like to get sick or very sick and lose work days and deal with sick children? Like, 
no one. So <laughs> I think we could use one of these. They, um, um, if you if you were in the United States in the in the post 9/11, maybe you remember the terrorist scale we had, something like that, green, orange, red, and then associated uh, guidelines to go with that. Guidelines like. If you don't mind getting sick, fine. But if you don't want to get sick, then these, these are here are simple things you can do. All right, so I may be wrong here. Uh, the, the the cognitive dissonance goes further. Like for me, um, I've lived in the United States for more than twenty years, I think. See, I lost track, uh, and I used to understand this country. I really loved it. That's why I stayed. I understood people. I understood the culture. I was at home. But now I'm lost. Uh, this is just my guess. And it's, it's a guess from, from what I gathered when I got sick with COVID, uh, how it happened. I, it gave me some insight as to why we don't have a guidance, why everyone is so laid back, why people just get sick and, and just are okay with that. When I got sick in, in February, um, oh, and I should preface this with, I, I am evolving in a very privileged circles. People around me have money, not a whole lot, but enough. And people around me are fully employed and they have good health insurance. I had to preface that with that. And I do too, I have good health insurance. But, <laughs> we'll talk about that, it's good, but not sufficient. When I got sick, what I heard from friends was, Oh, you got to take Paxlovid. So that was their solution. It should not be thought of as it's okay to get sick because we have that medicine. For several reasons, it's got side effects and, and all of that, and it's really expensive. So most of us can't. And even I, with my good health insurance, decided not to uh, because my, my family uh, my husband and I, we are healthy. We don't normally get sick. So we, we, we and, and even though we have a good health insurance plan, it still eats, if I want the real one, the, <laughs> the one where we don't have to be out of pocket by thousands and thousands of dollars, uh, it, it's, uh, it eats too much of my salary. Like I, I have other things I want to do with my money that, that pay health insurance that until COVID I never had to use. Um, so yeah, I'm like, I'm, I don't spend my money like that. Uh, and I don't take medicine that freely. And what's terrible about COVID and Paxlovid is that you have to make a decision before you get sick. First symptoms, you don't know how it's going to go. And you have to decide to take this medicine. That's it's not an innocent medicine. It's very potent. So you have that trade off, which is not a nice decision to have to make. So I made my own decision. Um, but I think others, for others, this is not as tough a decision as it might be for me. So I, I think there's a philosophy issue here. Uh, and since we're in philosophy, I see a parallel actually. In the United States, we are very laid back about getting sick. We are, we're very laid back about our food industry. We're very laid back with how we eat. I'm saying we, I mean, I'm just talking about statistically what's happening in the US society. People are not healthy. And uh, it's okay because we got doctors, we've got drugs. And COVID is the same thing. It's, it's, it's like having bad food on grocery stores. Now we have a virus going on and we're not going to mask because you just get sick, you take medicine. Uh, so that, that's my theory as to what's going on. So I know some are going to ask, or maybe you're wondering, what about vaccines? Uh, so that part might get me censored <laughs> from YouTube. Um, Vaccines are also a prescription medicine, and sometimes you have to take medicine. Uh, vaccines had a really important role to play when we were all naive to the virus. Uh, I, my first exposure to COVID was not the virus. My first exposure, well, it's not an exposure, but I, I was, I, I am vaccinated. So maybe that's how I stayed out of the hospital. I, I'm, I'm complaining about having been in bed for, for a, a week, but maybe it would have been a lot worse if I had not been vaccinated. So I did that. 
but you know, it doesn't solve the problem of getting sick. Because <laughs> vaccines don't do that. They keep you out of the hospital, but they don't like keep you out of the bed necessarily. Oh, I'm so spoiled, you guys. I've always been healthy. So I don't even want to spend a week in bed. I don't want to, uh, I mean, it got bad. I, I had a sore throat that was so bad that I couldn't sleep <laughs> for three days. I was, I took some pain medicine, but it wouldn't do the job. It was another thing. It was just terrible. So yeah, vaccines are nice, but it's not the only thing that I think we should be promoting. So I have come up with my own system. I have my own green, orange, red. So when cases are low, uh, I mean the green. This is the pre-COVID life. Fantastic. That's, that's when I, I don't worry about masking. I make my dental appointments at that time. Uh, it's I just enjoy like I go out I eat in restaurants it's just it's, it's life it's 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 a it's a party uh, and then there's the orange level so for me the orange level is where I start to be cautious I mask when I'm in crowded indoor spaces I will eat in public but only if it's well ventilated not too many people in the restaurant i will risk that same thing at work if i'm interacting with just a few a small group of people i won't mask i mean I, i'm taking some risk you know this is this is the measure of you got to live meanwhile you don't want to get sick all the time so I'm, I'm i'm treading that line best i can I, I open windows whenever I can, uh, like this uh, September, like while we were, <laughs> it's been going up and up, I've been opening the windows in my classroom, but I can, it's nice outside, why not do that? Uh, and if I don't have too many students in my classroom, I, I won't mask. So that, that's, the, that's the orange level. Red level is, which we are in right now, is um, all hands on deck, I'm masking. Uh, if, if I can't open windows, uh, I will mask. If I can't open windows but the classroom is full, I will still mask. I don't eat in public. I try not to. Today I did. I mentioned that. Not what I wanted to do, but what I didn't feel I could get out of. And no, no meals at restaurants, just uh, take out. So this has been uh, the new normal for me. This is my weekly visit to the CDC website, the masking on and off, depending upon what the cases are. But it's uh, especially masking is, uh, it, it's not easy. Why is the color weird? Seven? Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> masking is what I find the hardest. It's really easy to find masks nowadays and I got used to wearing them. So for me, it's like the easiest thing to do, but it's mentally not easy when you're the only person masking. And in particular for me, I was really stressed about masking in my classroom. What, what that looked like to the students, uh, I was concerned that they would not be able to hear me well. Uh, but I've also learned to project it and, I, and I've asked my students. But the, the way I introduced it when I first met my students at the beginning of the semester is I, I was honest with them. I, I told them that I had gotten quite sick uh, in, in February and that I did not want to bring this home to my husband. You know, sometimes you got to speak from the heart. I don't do that often, but this time I just, I, I did that. And then I also told them that I, I would be masking and, and that I would be opening the windows in the classroom, weather permitting for my own protection and also for their protection. And then later I asked for written feedback after a week of teaching on whether uh, they could see what I was writing on the board well. I always ask that. And also whether they could hear me well. I also always ask that. And the feedback was, just positive they say we can see the board great we can hear you really well and uh, on the day-to-day -day interaction with my students they're here I have fun like when I'm teaching masked or not I I have fun that's probably for the first time in a while this is this whole COVID thing has been really stressful 
So they're back and back and it's, it's just been really good. But even with that, it, it takes a, a lot of willpower, uh, peer pressure. And if you're a parent, like how do you ask your child to, to mask in school if they're the only one doing that? I don't think I could as a parent ask my child to do that. I don't know as a child if I could do that. Like it's it's just like I'm I'm a fully grown person <laughs> and I'm already sensitive to peer pressure. I do get remarks, even from close colleagues. It is not it's just simply not accepted. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, so as a society, I think we could do a much better job with that. It should be it should be the norm. Why isn't it? It is so easy to do, and then we wouldn't have to get sick all the time like that. Finally, public announcement. I mentioned before that when I got COVID, I got sick after that. Uh, n not, not long COVID, even though I did lose my sense of taste and smell for a while. It all came back after, after four months. No, what was really hard, <laughs> I, I got colds after COVID. That's because I've just described how difficult it is to mask. And when you're still, like after I was bedridden for a week, but you know, after that, you're just really stuffed up. So at <laughs> that time, it was not easy to mask. So I didn't. And I was, um, first of all, I'm like, well, I'm immune now. Party time. Uh, so I, I dropped the mask. And then I got a cold that made me quite sick. So cold number one. And then I, I finally recovered from that. And then I got another cold that also made me quite sick. So that was uh, probably a month and a half of not being able to breathe, essentially. Later, I learned that COVID affects your immune system. It, uh, sure, you build a defense against COVID, but your defense against everything else is down. I had not realized that. So that's another video I'm putting out into the wind. I put out another one into the wind uh, and that one got a surprising number of views and that was why the French stay slim. Somehow in the United States, we're really obsessed about that question. Truly, thank you for watching. Treasure your loved ones, treasure your health, be kind. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like, consider subscribing, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.